Oh hi, I was randomly struck with the urge to make a wisp guide, crazy right? In all seriousness, I feel like it's my duty to at least nominally educate everybody on the potential and limitations of your average wisp now that the arcane has come out and brought people to the hero. This guide's unique in that it's not how I'd normally play him laning wise, it, I'm, I'm one of those weirdos who plays a mid or jungle, but baby steps. There's a lot of basics to cover before we can even attempt to wrap our hands around that. So this builds a typical support IO guide dealing with your role in the game and your own personal objectives and what they should be as well as some advanced mechanics you can use to trick people into thinking you're good at wisp. I mean IO. Let's be real here, you're going to pick Io just because you want to, because you've got the Arcana for him, regardless of whether it's a good pick or not, and that's fine, he's not the worst hero to have every game. Funnily enough, considering his infamy for having consistently the lowest win rate of any hero since he was brought into the game, the Dota buff matchup stats are heavily skewed, so most of this is just conjecture and my own opinions, but in a typical game it'd go like this. Io strives when he's paired with a buddy who frontlines and really digs the movement speed, damage reduction and attack speed that he gets, his favourite allies would be heroes like Alchemist, Sven, Tiny, Huskar and the classic classic Wisp CK that the International 3 was sort of one with. You'll notice that all of these heroes uh, typically lack mana and that adds to why Wisp pairs up with them well. It's really hard to find statistics for this considering technically Wisp loses against every hero. His highest matchup is a 46% chance to win against a Puck. But here, I'll give you all my own personal experiences. Any hero who throws their entire kit on someone and has nothing afterwards is countered by Wisp. Even ignoring relocate, if a Legion commander jumps on your carry and no one's on you, you just overcharge yourself, heal yourself up, tether and the jewel is lost. Same goes for Pudge, Necrophos, that typical thing. But if we flip it over, any hero that benefits from a second unit being in close proximity to their target loves an IO. Imagine a Witch Doctor throwing a cask on your carry only for you to save them by tethering into bounce range. The same goes for Wind Ranger and Shackle Shot and Lich and Chain Frost. But the counter you'll run into the most you can't even plan around because it's the accidental clipping, the collateral damage kill. I think like Luna and Gyro and Tinker and Medusa and Puck and maybe Earthshaker and like Warlock with Fatal Bonds. But ignoring all of that, here's a question. Can Ricky backstab Io? Yes, yes he can. This is a silly question. Move on. As with every only way to play guide I've done and will ever do, you can find this one in-game as well as on YouTube. The link is in the description and the skill build goes like this. Remember when Tether stunned? What a weird time that was. Oh, it's back. This build is pretty much not even really tinkered with. 90% of your typical support Wisp games, you'll do this exactly, which of course means that I wouldn't because I wouldn't play Wisp as a support, but that's a story for maybe next month. Tether Tethers. You know what this spell is. Basically, it has a cast range of 1800, and if you cast it from between 700 to 1800 range, you'll be pulled to the unit. If you are under 700, you don't move at all. And if you then move further than 900 units, the tether breaks. A good way to learn the 900 unit limit is to pay attention to the particles of the spell. At 700, it changes color, and at 800, it starts flickering. Tether gives movement speed to both units. It can be used on creeps, and enemies that pass through the tether are slowed. Tether can't be cast on allies using BKB, and after tether is cast for the 12 second duration, you can break tether with a sub ability. But the biggest part of tether is that it heals the tethered unit 150% of any of Io's health and mana regen. That includes just base regen. It works like this. If Io has a heal on him, but he's full health himself, herself, the tethered unit won't heal, which sucks, unless of course we had a spell that drained health and mana constantly. But before that, spirits is the big max first spell. We get it finished at about level seven. Spirit summons five balls over four seconds that start orbiting clockwise around you. It gives you two sub abilities to call them closer or further away over the course of, I think, three seconds. These spells don't actually count as spells, so they don't trigger any on cast things like magic stack charges and silences arcane curse. But regardless of that, the spirits pass through creeps and deal a little bit of damage, but they don't pass through heroes. When they collide with a hero, they explode and deal way more damage. They don't explode on illusions though, or anyone invisible or invulnerable, so use them to find the actual hero in the crowd. When they explode, they give vision. You can use them to sort of scout when you're taking a tower next to some trees you think enemies might be hiding in, because obviously when it rotates around, it'll hit them and reveal them. What sucks is that even if 
if Io goes invis, the spirits are still visible. So anyone who studied first grade geometry would be able to sort of triangulate where this person might be in between these five floating balls. The spirits last 19 seconds, and when they die, they do so in the same explosion they do if they hit a hero. So in reality, it'd totally be possible to do a 500 damage nuke on something by just standing next to it when the spirits die, or are resummoned. We're halfway through literally just explaining Io's spells. I can imagine why he's not the most popular hero in the game, but bear with me. Overcharge is secretly Io's enabling skill. Basically, Overcharge is turned on, gives you and your tethered ally a bunch of attack speed and damage reduction, but drains Io's health and mana, and only Io's health and mana. Your allies don't lose anything, and the health and mana regen is the same no matter what level it is. But the thing is, it's your current HP and mana. So after the 70% mark, you're already innately regening enough of both to counteract it. And then there's Relocate. So... Relocate sends Io anywhere on the map for 12 seconds and then without question or protest brings him right back. You cannot stop this. You can't use yourself, you can't BKB, nothing will stop you from coming back other than death. Anyone he's tethered with travels to and from with him, but you don't actually have to have the same person tethered on both trips. You can drop off your fat lazy 0 10 Pudge who sits around all day playing video games and pick up on the way a hunky 12 and 0 axe who could carry you and call you princess if that was what you were into. Relocate has a delay before it relocates. And if Io stunned in between the casting of the spell and the spell going off, it completely breaks and puts it on cooldown anyway. And finally, Relocate always shows up on the enemy minimap, vision or no, so you can't use it to sneak in a cheeky ward. But I like your ingenuity. I like that. Once again, I gotta remind you, this is the normal IO build, so don't be surprised if I suggest items that actually help your team. Buy the courier, buy some tangos. If your team's okay with it, you can skip over all of the starting items, get the bounty rune first, and immediately get a bottle. If you wanted to do that, you have 75 gold to spend on a branch or a fairy fire, but usually I just buy a ward. We have an interesting little spin on the usual should my carry get phase or treads dilemma. As a support, our options are tranquil boots versus arcane boots, but in this one scenario, the answer is pretty self-contained. Get both. Get Tranks and Arcanes. Io is really the only support you can really justify that on every game. Maybe you have a Tusk going Greaves, but early game you got Tranks for better roaming and he had a CM on his team to cover mana. Random situations like that, yeah, I can see it. But Io, you can argue every game is good. We have the answer, so here's the question. What items can a Wisp go that give him both mana for his tether and overcharge, health for his tether and overcharge, and movement speed when trying to keep the tether on a teammate who really wants to get away from you? You'll find out how much you need an extra 10, maybe 20 movement speed when your tether breaks the instant you latch into someone running into the fight. But then all of this is just suggestion, right? I might go at some games, some games where I want more item slots, I might not. If you personally like it, more power to you. If you don't, hey, play what you win with. But if you see a Wisp doing this, don't flame him just because he has two boots. In fact, if you see anyone getting two boots, don't flame them. They, they have reasons, even if you don't agree with them, so ask them about it. Maybe you can, I don't know, enlighten them, or become enlightened yourself. Literally any item that gives decent health or mana regen is an item that Wisp might want anyway though. That extends all the way through mech to Greaves to heart. But normally, would stop at Greaves and then pick up the typical utility items and Solar Crest, Hellbird, and Pipe among other things. It's like, I really want to suggest Satanic, but I don't think people would really be into that. And then there's Urn, an item you'd assume would be core on Wisp, but does Wisp really need to hold it? No, not really. As long as someone on the team holds it and uses it on Wisp, then you're fine. So here's the basics. I'll get into the insane stuff in the early way to play IO Part 2, the Armlet Saga. For now, we're nearly done. Level 1 you're pretty much up and running, you can contest runes, teamfight everything in the way that Storm Spirit uses ball lightning to get from place to place, so can you with Tether on any ally. And it's only 40 mana with 100% uptime, so use it more than you don't use it. A good tip for making sure IO Spirits hit your target rather than overshooting or undershooting is to set them to the maximum and then bring them back for one second and then tap Spirits in again to toggle it off. Now you have stationary Spirits at a range of 575. Obviously stationary as in they're still rotating but they're not coming any closer or further away from you, which just so happens to be your attack range 575. You'll see in practice why you'd want them there. But really, I feel like most people see Io as a glorified 7th item slot for your carry, and that's not really right anymore. He's a hero of his own, just as capable as the average core to carry and dictate the pace of a game. In fact, other than heroes with massive teamfight ults or pushing spells, he's probably the best support for people wanting to lead their team to take advantages in the way that he wants them. Simply because, if you're playing him right, there's never a point where your teammates can go, Oh, I have to go back to base, let's just sit back and farm for a bit because they're never low. Going even further with that, you can even act as a taxi service, relocating to Fountain to heal up, collect their items, and then get back into a fight faster than if they waited for the courier. 
you lead the team. The only hurdle to that is that if your team is worse than you, you feel like they never really want to help. But that's not true. Every person on your team wants you to win. Every game. Nobody's perfect. They might flame you or call you bad just to get a rise out of you, but that's because they're thinking with their fists. Dota is a game you invest a lot of emotional energy into. People say awful things to you just to relieve the tension they themselves are feeling because maybe they lost their lane, maybe they died. What you need to fully hone in on with a hero that depends so much on teamwork is how every person in your game, you included, is trying to make you win. They might see the game in a different light or disagree that pushing is the best thing to do right now. And that's fine. It's good. Just politely taking everything they say on board and offering your own thoughts wins more games than a flame and a mute or a yelling match or a stolen last hit you know they wanted because you really want to fuck with them. I owe the support in more ways than one, and so can you be. Was that emotional speech a bit too much right at the end? Nah. I get sappy sometimes. This guide is unique in that it's the only guide for a whole year that's come out as soon as it's done. My normal videos are Patreon exclusives for at least a week before you guys see them. In fact, right now there is a backlog of four unreleased videos on that Patreon. You'll see them soon. If you want to see them now, chuck a dollar at my Patreon page and you'll have access to them, a new private Discord server, and the ability to play in houses on every Sunday. And also, Go watch Twin Peaks, it's amazing, it's the show your dad keeps raving about, and after 25 years, a new season is out. Go back and watch the first two seasons and then the movie. If you're feeling it, buy the soundtrack too. In fact, most of the music playing all throughout this guide was from that soundtrack. I'm not being paid, I just like the show. I just like the show, I want more people to like it so I can talk about it. The people who like this show enough to support it are Michael Bauer, Leonard, Gore Rocker, Free Kill, Foxy, a fucking Luxley, Chris, 1996, I for Trouble, Matt Masters, Apache Mari, wearing a headwear neck, wear nicknamed as Hackcrafter, Lucas Cocoon, Mr. Magic, aka The Tones, Pearson Newborn, Exy, Jeff Miller, Hubert Motherfucking Cumberdale, Shooter, Chroma McAngelface, Mr. Revolut, Turd Ferguson, 67, Ru, Bru, 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 Kaiser Wilhelm, Michael, Give Iro the Next Arcana, Rob, he's gotta change his name, Shadow Sweetheart, Evil Motherfucking Jellyfish, Aaron Tang, Jacob Miller, Procrastination Studios, Fortunate Hive, Shiva's Guard, uh, Surprise Fatty, Zibbity Zamboni, Zim Zam, Fliggle Wop, Eric Wright is my son, Brady, you need to stop feeding, Soranog, English Breakfast Tea, now part of the $5 Club, I won, Orslavik, 15, slap a leg of lamb on the side for a bit, Klamath Dice, I'm in the Ultra Death Cat, Punith P, Zewok, Hunterfield, Pro S, Christian Rudder, Herpa Derpa, Duda Derp, Swaggity, Booty, Beep Boop D, Booty Souffle, Red, Kerosene, Parker Bukowski, Redless, Snuggly Wuggums, Milocot, Yabos McGee, Tsunami Shadow, Red Mitchell, and Xena Penumbra. The rest have their name scrolling, but don't pay enough for me to read it. Yep, I charge people to be featured in these videos. And people pay! What? Insanity. I guess we just wait until the whole thing is scrolled. Probably could speed up the footage. That would probably help. Um. Oh, okay, we're coming up to the end. Okay, bye.